Good evening, thanks for joining us. Nine days after escaping custody, 42-year-old William Bicknell was arrested near Grand Prairie following a standoff with police. RCMP arrested Bicknell near Sexsmith, Alberta, following a vehicle pursuit that started in Spirit River. The pursuit ended just a few kilometers east of Sexsmith Saturday night. RCMP say a standoff started after Bicknell's vehicle entered a ditch. The area was contained and RCMP say Bicknell surrendered to them just after 8 p.m. The fugitive, who was serving a life sentence for second-degree murder, was at large for more than a week after he overpowered a guard escorting him on a day pass from the Drumheller Institution. Police now confirm that Bicknell is in custody and was taken to hospital after sustaining undetermined injuries. They say an RCMP officer sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Charges are pending against Bicknell. The Alberta Serious Incident Response Team has been called in to investigate. Lloyd Minster has a rich history that began with a group of hardworking people. Harsh weather and work conditions did not discourage them from following their dreams of owning their own land. Tag and Winkfield has more on their story after a long and perilous journey from Britain. After a long and difficult journey from Britain, the original colonists finally arrived in what was soon to be called Lloyd Minster. But their trials were just beginning. Their first priority was to build shelter to protect them from the elements. It was very much still winter here uh, in, in the area, but many of them you know, uh, lived in the uh, in tents, Saudis, uh, rudimentary structures that they could create out on their homesteads. Original bar colonist Alice Rendell wrote regular letters to friends and family back home describing their new life. It's bitter cold, and on hard ground, we don't get much refreshing rest. The majority of people who came were not experienced with agriculture and were small business merchants. Many struggled with learning basic farming techniques. The doctor that had set up, even at the camp in Saskatoon, he had set up on the edge of the camp, and some of his first visitors were people who had uh, injuries from learning the art of chopping wood. After surviving harsh winter conditions, the colonists began building their houses and plowing their fields, but summer brought prairie fires which threatened and often destroyed their homes. In spite of all their hardships, their dedication reaped rewards. Alice Rendell writes of her feelings of accomplishments. Here, one feels that each week's work is a step onward, whilst in the old country, a year's hard toil brought disappointment. They had community spirit and everyone helped everyone. And there was music and dances and, and so even though they had all these hardships, um, they managed to get through it because they had each other. For more information on the Bar Colonists and their lives, you can go to the Lloydminster Archives or here at the Bar Colony Heritage Cultural Centre. Tegan Winkfield, New Cap News. Dancers from the festival program at Fame Dance Studios are pirouetting their way to upcoming competitions with one last dress rehearsal. In full costume and makeup, they perform numerous solos, duets, and group numbers for their parents and friends. Kathy Lee has the details on what these dancers feel is the secret to performing successfully and making the show shine. With stomach butterflies now a thing of the past, Kiana Walker says dancing in front of a crowd is easier with the help of her team. Just how like the seniors come behind the stage and like your friends just come and watch. From junior to senior dancers, the strong camaraderie is echoed throughout members of Fame Dance Studio. If somebody doesn't, um, if they're not confident in one part of our dance, then they feel free to ask everybody else in the dance and we'll go over it with them and make sure they get it because again it's all about being together. And Teamwork is what makes the festival showcase run smoothly and what Makachuk enjoys about dancing. I love performing and I love how you need to work together as a team to make your dance look good and if you're just off doing your own thing it doesn't flow well and it doesn't feel like you're a part of something. Before competing in two upcoming festivals next month, the showcase is the last chance for the team to polish their numbers. It is so important for dancers to rehearse in the venue that they're going to be in. So if they're going to be dancing on stage, we want them to do a full show, full practice on stage, not just always in the studio. The experience allows them to be in front of a large crowd in costume. Because like you see like what mistakes you have and what you're really good at. So then you can easily just practice the things. And it seems the dancers are ready to take the festival competitions by storm. 
I think we're all doing pretty well. We're at a good place for being ready and everything, and we should be good to go. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. Well, with everything surrounding the Lloydminster Bobcats this season off the ice, it didn't seem to distract the on-ice product. For the first time in eight seasons, the Cats made it out of the first round, and even though they were swept by the defending Interflex Cup champs, Spruce Grove in the quarterfinals, they still managed to give them a run for their money. The team gathered together for one last time Saturday night to reflect on the year that was and celebrate all the accomplishments. All 23 players and their families were together under one roof for one last hurrah Saturday evening for the Bobcats year-end banquet. And some hardware was handed out to the team's top performers. I didn't know what to expect. I, I thought I'd be in the running for it. But um, when you get most valuable player for your team, it, it's only one word comes to mind. It's really an honor. It feels awesome to be recognized by the coach and the team as uh, the top, top defenseman. Um, I want to say thanks to all the coaches and definitely my teammates for supporting me all year. The decisions weren't easy for the Colonel or Cole Fisher to make. Team MVP could have went either way. It was kind of between Corey and him because they both improved so much on their stats and their game that we just had to pick one or the other and we just, you know, we both decided on Kyle. For the guys, the night wasn't a contest to see who could collect the most awards. It was a time to spend with their teammates. Some of these guys I've played with for three years, some guys two years, and uh, definitely formed a lot of friendships. And I mean, it's definitely going to say hard. It's going to be hard to say about all the boys. In all sports, you know, your team, you become family members, and um, it's going to be real tough to say goodbye to the guys that aren't going to be here next year. And, um, you know, I just got nothing but great things to say about every guy. I really never know what to say when you're saying goodbye because I never look at saying goodbye. Kind of hope you'll always run into him, even though in reality, you probably I won't see 80% of these people again. I certainly hope that's not the case, but I'd like to hear how all the boys did and where their futures are. You couldn't have the whole team together and not ask their thoughts on the state of the franchise. I know personally I'd love to stay in Lloyd, and I can say every guy here would want to too, so hopefully it does stay and the league should allow that to happen. Puts a little bit of pressure on me as I always laugh with everyone. I say, well, I had one boss, now I've got 96 bosses. With a few days in off in between a series, rather, the AJHL semifinals kicked off last night in Spruce Grove and Okotoks. The Saints were victorious all but once during the regular season over the Oil Barons, and the Oilers swept the Kodiaks in all six games this year. The home squads kept up the regular season success as the Saints knocked off the Oil Barons 5-3 and lead the best of seven series 1-0. Both teams lit it up on the power play, Fort Mac went 3 for 8, while Spruce Grove was 2 for 5. Special teams might just be the difference in that series. In the South, Okotoks slipped by Camrose 3 to 1 and are up one game to nothing. Both series continue on this evening with game number 2. Evolution Fighting Championships has grown from a local event held in a bar to one of Alberta's best up-and-coming mixed martial arts organizations. For the first time in the, in the promotion's history, rather, they held their first event outside of Lloydminster. Last night in Cold Lake, fight fans got a chance to see Midwest fighters put it on the line inside the EFC cage. Nick Hainan fights out of the border city and was first on the card and managed to force his opponent to verbally tap out with an arm lock in the second round. Mark Beausoleil took his opponent to the ground with a huge slam and then proceeded to work on the ground to eventually coax a tap out from a Kimura arm lock. Cold Lake's own John Cohen barely broke a sweat as he timed a counter strike perfectly to knock out his opponent with one big shot just 16 seconds into the first round, bringing the crowd to its feet where they would basically remain for the rest of the night as two more hometown fighters finished off the card. John Seminar came out of his corner on fire and demolished his opponent, powering out of a submission att attempt and working the fight to the ground where he unleashed some brutal ground and pound that forced the referee to intervene just over two minutes into the first round. And for the main event, EFC heavyweight champ Tim Camelli dropped to 205 pounds to try and capture the light heavyweight title. John Ganshon, Ganshorn rather, stood, in his, uh, stood in his way and managed to tie Camelli up and land a heavy shot before Camelli stormed back with his own blast that dropped Ganshorn. Camelli followed up with relentless hammer fists. And just one minute and 40 seconds into the first round, became a dual weight class title holder. All right, and that's all the time we have for news, weather and sports tonight. Good evening, everyone.